look forward to uh, renewing the state children's health insurance program. I'm going to continue to work with Governor Beebe um, and uh, to ensure that we can fulfill our obligation to the thousands of children here in Arkansas and the millions of children across the nation. Um, it's up to us to put politics aside. And I've continually said, this is not an issue where politics should play a role. It's not only the future of our nation, but the well-being of millions of children across this nation, and they are depending on us. So it's time for us to fulfill our commitment to them, and that's exactly what I intend to do. I'll be working hard with Chairman Baucus and Senator Grassley um, from the Senate side. Uh, we've already had several discussions of what we need to do. We're very appreciative to the Southern Governors um, uh, for really stepping in and, and taking a stand and uh, making sure that they uh, are pushing forward as well, that we get something done and that we don't fall on our sword um, just to make a political statement, but that what we do is remember what we're here to do, and that is to take good care of our children. So I'm here to answer any questions as we move forward, um, but I uh, definitely want to thank you all for taking the time to be here. Um, it is now my great pleasure uh, to turn to our governor, Governor Mike Beebe. As you all know, as I said, 10 years ago when Our Kids First was first being created, it was State Senator uh, Mike Beebe then that was the lead sponsor uh, in the Arkansas legislature and was so instrumental in ensuring that it became law. He has continued to be a tireless advocate for children, um, not to mention the fact that he's just one heck of a great governor. We love him. Thank you, Senator. I, uh, I don't know how uh, strongly I can emphasize how important it is to have an advocate in the United States Senate such as Blanche on this particular issue because uh, she is uh, in a position, and it's taken her a while to get to that position, but she is in a position uh, of extraordinary influence among her colleagues. She has uh, Positioned herself wonderfully to be able to represent the people of our state, and indeed, as she mentioned, not just uh, our Kansans and not just the children of Arkansas, but the children of the country. You can't imagine how much of uh, a comfort it is for all of us in this state to realize and know that somebody with that kind of influence and in that kind of a position uh, is there fighting for us, and we're very, very grateful. To you. The uh, the last point that, uh, that the Senator just made is the one I want to really emphasize. And that is, uh, not only are we talking about the potential for expanding or increasing uh, the SGIP program, even more basic than that, we're talking about fighting the cuts in the SGIP program. Under the current administration proposal, not only is there not an expansion, there's actually a significant reduction in the number of eligible children that, that's covered by this. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody, any, virtually any segment of our society who has had a legitimate criticism of our kids first. It is a program that's reduced our uninsured uh, children's population by more than 13%. Well, I say it, it reduced it a whole lot more than that percentage wise, but we went down from 23% to 10%. In, in uh, children being uninsured, it's amazing that anybody would suggest that this program is not one of the best programs available under any scenario for anybody. First of all, uncompensated care is a tax on all of us. Uncompensated care is a hidden tax on everybody who pays taxes and everybody who has health insurance. Everybody in this room who already has a health care policy paying premiums on that health care policy and for every amount of uncompensated care that our medical community has to provide, whether it's our hospitals or physicians or nurses, whatever it may be, that uncompensated care has to be paid for by somebody. You're not going to turn away somebody that's seriously ill or seriously sick or, or somebody that's injured. The health care community treats those people. And if they can't get paid for that, if that uncompensated care exists, then all of us who are paying end up paying more because of the cost of that medical treatment. So if we can spread this out and more and more folks can have at least some degree of health insurance, 
then we are actually saving money in the long run on that uncompensated care issue. And our kids first, SCHIP, actually provides not only the humanitarian and healthcare needs, preventive needs, the actual cost savings that would occur later on in life, later on in, in those children's lives, by having the kind of care on the front end that minimizes those health care costs and keeps our children healthy for all the right humanitarian reasons. It's also good economics for the very reason that it reduces the number and the amount of uncompensated care. So if you don't want to do it for the right reasons, if you won't want to do it because we need to take care of our kids, if that argument doesn't persuade anybody, then let the economic argument that it's really in the long run a cost savings to all of us persuade you. Either way, I don't care as long as we get the message out that it is a wonderful program that provides health insurance and health care and more often than not preventive health care to our young people. And after all, if we're not going to do that, why are we here? You know? So I will leave it to the good senator and her colleagues to determine what that level of expansion needs to be in light of the other obligations that our federal government has. I won't presume to judge what the appropriate level of expansion might be. We'll take all we can get. <laughs> I will leave those kind of decisions to the people who actually have all the facts as they try to address a budget that's conflicted with so many demands. But one thing I will tell you is we can't go backwards. And not only do we have to maintain what we have, we have to maintain what we have with the ordinary and expected inflationary increases that go along with it, or else we'd be going backwards, period. Our young people deserve no less. Our working families deserve no less. Those parents that she talked about that need that peace of mind to retain their productivity need nothing less. We're all in this together. We have a wonderful advocate in Senator Lincoln leading this charge. Other states aren't quite as fortunate, but that's all right. They can tag on to us, and she'll help them, too. <laughs> and it is vital that all of you all do whatever you can with relatives in other states, with colleagues in other places, with friends here in Arkansas, with the rest of our congressional delegation, to ensure that people who make these decisions in Washington understand and appreciate the significance and the importance of a program actually helps children and families beyond virtually anything that we've seen come down the pike in health care. And Amy, I haven't forgotten where it came from. God bless all of you.